Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to break a few different uh, tensile specimens with my machine. So as you can see it, uh, I have a few different specimens. Uh, regarding the materials, there are two different uh, materials used. So firstly I have this uh, steel. I don't exactly know which kind of steel but uh, it fits my machine perfectly. So you can see there are three holes on it. The two holes, holes on the side uh, are in contact with the pin, which are basically holding the uh, specimen. Then the middle hole is just to let the screw go through it, uh, which clamps the grip uh, on the on the tensile testing machine. So it's a very small specimen. The length of it is like uh, 34 millimeters, but which is more important is the parallel length. So the parallel, parallel section in the middle, that is five millimeters. And then this plate is one millimeter thick. And the width of this area is uh, 3.4 millimeter roughly, but we can actually measure it. So we just uh, take this caliper. So this is like 34 ish uh, millimeters. And then uh, the width of this wall stuff is, is about 18 millimeters. And then we have this uh, section in the middle. I try to fit it perfectly. So this is 3.6 millimeters. And then the thickness, well, I should not measure the thickness with this because a uh, micrometer screw would be better, but this is like roughly one millimeter thick. And then the parallel length, uh, well, it should be roughly about five millimeters. So I just set it there. So you can see that uh, the parallel length is is about five millimeters. When I designed it in the CAD uh, software, I made this section to be five millimeters and then the radius starts after that. So when you can see the shoulder uh, area. So this is the first specimen, which is uh, some random steel. It's not stainless, it's, it, as, as you can see, it's pretty obvious that it rusts. And then I printed uh, the same design or almost the same design so as you can see on the metal uh, specimen, the gap here is filled up. So the, these two parts of the grip will not buckle when you, when you pull the specimen. But then I printed these earlier, then I redesigned the, the specimen with these metal parts. So these are the similar uh, dimensions, similar thickness or roughly depending on the on the precision of the printer and then this has a uh, slightly longer I think one uh, centimeter or even more uh, something around one uh, centimeter uh, parallel length or gauge length and then I have this it's the same as this uh, specimen regarding the length but it's more thick and here I would like to tell you that the thickness of the specimen uh, doesn't matter if you try to uh, extract the uh, Young's modulus, so the uh, elastic modulus, because uh, basically what you do there, you get a stress type of uh, unit, which is basically the stress, uh, or not the stress, the stress is basically the force divided by the area and then the force is basically the force which you use to pull this uh, uh, sample apart and then the area is the cross-section area of this so you basically normalize uh, by the cross-section area every time so when we when I will compare these two uh, guys here then this should break at higher strength but uh, uh, this should be break at higher forces, not uh, strength, but uh, when I normalize it by the cross-section area, they should provide uh, similar numbers. So what I will do is basically one 
two, well, three, four different uh, tests. And obviously the steel will be the strongest. And then uh, we will see how they uh, change uh, the values. And uh, I printed these uh, specimens in this direction. So when I test this specimen, I actually test the strengths of the material itself and not the adhesion between the layers. Because if I print in this direction, so the printing direction is parallel to the uh, tensile direction, which is the direction where you pull your sample, then you you will always test the adhesion between the two layers of the specimen. So I can do that and I will do that, but now I'm just uh, interested in breaking some uh, 3D printed specimens. But then these are, let's call them spare parts. I have uh, hundreds of these, luckily, so I will test more, but uh, the main focus of this video will be these uh, four samples. So. I will uh, show you the tests, so I will uh, zoom on the parallel lengths, so this middle area, and uh, I will show you how the surface uh, changes during the testing, and then after the testing I will show you the tensile curves, or the displacement force uh, curves, and I will explain, or try to explain what happens there. So now let's go to the tensile testing machine and uh, let's run a few tests.
So here I just want to explain the tensile curves of the four different materials that I have uh, tested. Uh, these are not proper tensile curves because I plotted the displacement and the force and if you want to uh, analyze them in a better way then you should use the engineering or the true stress strain curves but uh, now I'm just focusing on the displacement and the force. So four different materials uh, I assign different colors to the different curves so you can see that the largest curve or the curve which goes to the highest uh, force is of course the metal so you can see that the maximum force is nearly reaching uh, 1200 it's like 1140 let's say and uh, it's more or less uh, ductile which means that uh, it can uh, have a very long or it can have a reasonably long uh, elongation as compared to the original length so you can see that we almost uh, had three millimeters uh, displacement at the end of course this is not the not only the displacement of the specimen itself because the displacement sensor is attached to the cross heads and uh, so this includes the uh, rigidity of the system or the stiffness of the system as well so this displacement also includes the uh, deformation of the other parts and the uh, elongation of the load cell because that is also a bit uh, flexible if I can say it like that but uh, more or less it's okay and then if we check the blue curve that was like the smallest uh, specimen so the same geometry as the metal specimen so it breaks uh, quite early it's like uh, 270 newton force so it's like 27 uh, kilograms and then the elongation of it it's it's very bad and then the next uh, plastic is uh, with a bit longer uh, parallel lengths or gauge lengths so basically it breaks or it starts to uh, get worse and worse around the same force so something like 27 28 uh, kilograms or 280 uh, newton force but uh, you can see that uh, it has much uh, larger elongation this is because uh, due to the printing uh, there is a small difference so this is due to the the layers of, of the printed material because it's uh, simply a different uh, geometry if you make it a bit longer but uh, the thickness is the same uh, as the other and then the third material which is a bit strange as we could see it on the video so this goes up uh, a bit higher in uh, force so it's like uh, 435 uh, newton is like the maximum force and then uh, after a while uh, roughly after two millimeter elongation uh, it still goes and you can see that there is another plateau here and then there is like a final uh, fracture of the specimen and this is because this was quite thick and uh, the specimen was more or less two parts uh, made of two parts because I did not use 100% infill uh, setting for this kind of uh, the printing of this kind of press specimen so therefore the specimen was uh, made of basically two parts one shell and uh, that was like the outer outer layers and then the infill itself was like a different structure so first uh, the the infill uh, broke and then there were still some parts which could uh, withstand this uh, sort of elongation and then after that uh, everything failed and then we went down to almost zero force uh, there were a few parts left 
but uh, I just did not want to continue the test. But the main failure, failure is uh, roughly at the same elongation and then the specimen goes down and uh, depending on the pattern of the printing then there can be still some let's say connections within the plastic. So uh, for metals it's quite uh, straightforward because it's just one bulk uh, material but if you have some uh, plastic which is like printed or has a sort of uh, texture then you can see that uh, you can produce different uh, curves but uh, the most important thing is that uh, they start to fail around the same uh, displacement which is like uh, half uh, a bit more than half a millimeter for this uh, type of uh, material it's, it's a PLA so as you could see that uh, of course the metal is, is very very strong and it differs uh, quite much because uh, uh, because uh, the metals deform in different way as uh, plastic uh, does so yeah so I hope that uh, this video was fun and it was helpful in some way and uh, see you in the next video